Okay, everyone, welcome to another episode of the Mashed Potatoes. And today, me and Caleb will both be reacting to a little bit of Apple news and, um, yeah, just giving our thoughts and reactions. Let's go! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> episode three, let's go! Okay, so anyway, today <laughs> might be a bit of a shorter episode. But anyway, today, um, the first thing I wanted to talk about actually is Apple, just today this morning, released the second generation HomePod. Second generation HomePod? Do you know what the original HomePod was? Yeah, didn't it come out like three years ago? No, so actually the first HomePod was released in 2018. But the problem oh, was... Wow. The problem was the fact that it sold for $300, which is a quite a high price for a speaker. Yeah. And so Apple just released a second generation today. But the thing about it is that if we look at it, like from your impressions, you can see on the website that it doesn't look too different. And even people online haven't seen much of a difference between both of them. Yeah, I was going to comment. It, it doesn't look different like at all. It, it looks like the same thing, which I guess can be a good thing. Like there's not, you know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. Yeah, and so I've heard many YouTubers say it has great sound, but one of the downfalls was it was not only its price, but its functionality as a smart speaker. Because, you know, you have Alexa and you have Google, and they're very smart smart speakers. But Siri, it kind of lacks in the pack, I guess you could say, when it comes to um, smart um, assistants, I guess you could say. You could say Apple's just, you know, only a few years late to this entire thing. yeah. Well, I mean, the thing is, is that it's crazy about it is that this is one of the few because Google has, and Microsoft kind of have a reputation of starting projects and then canceling them. Mostly Google. Yeah. But Apple, this is, one, Google. this is one of the few products that Apple actually canceled and then somehow just brought back on a whim. It seems like to me because really? like there's some there's some YouTubers. I've seen nothing about it, though. So you say it just yeah. got brought back, so number two is back. I haven't seen any ads, media, or anything for it. Well, so when that, did this thing get announced? Just today, this morning. Oh, just today? Just today. Wow. So, um, yeah, so anyway, the thing about it is that, um, so Apple, the only two product Apple I can say were discontinued because they were just a standalone product, like standalone products that were discontinued was the HomePod and AirPower, but AirPower never came out. That's the thing. What was AirPower supposed to be? Oh, so in 2017... Sorry. Um, AirPower was a thing in 2017 along the iPhone 10, where you could place your phone, your Apple Watch, and your AirPods on one charger and charge them all simultaneously. It was a little mad. Oh! You, let me show you. It was that thing. Yeah, here, let me show you, actually. It was supposed to be like this, right here. Oh, but then oh, that thing I remember that yeah and then oh, Apple canceled it because they had thermal issues with it. it it kept overheating and so oh. Apple after can delaying it delaying it delaying it they eventually cancel it in early 2019 wow. so yeah anyway um so and the thing is is that it's priced exactly the same I've yet to see YouTube comparisons because it just came out so it's shipping on February 3rd so we'll see okay if it's really soon. So we'll see any comparisons and see if it's any better. But from my perspective, like my initial reaction, I feel like if the last generation failed, it doesn't seem like there's anything in this one that would make it better than the last one. Like Maybe just like a newer technology that makes it more like yeah. fluid or something? Like, I don't know. Like, well, so what exactly were the problems with the last one that they were trying to fix besides well, price? The they didn't. The thing is, the last generation didn't have problems. The problem was it didn't sell well. Because actually, fun fact, uh. at its best-selling point in quarter three or four of 2019, guess what percentage of the smart home speaker market it had had? Uh, zero point five percent. Five percent was its peak of the entire smart oh, home speaker. Oh, percent was its peak. That's more than I thought. Okay. But that's <laughs> like that's between 2018 to when it was discontinued in. I think it was discontinued in 2021, actually. Here, let me just that quickly pull up Mac Tracker and see. Sorry. Ha have they made this one cheaper at all, or are they still just keeping no. it like, at that $300 mark? That's the weird thing, is that if we go to 
the original HomePod. So it was discontinued March 2021. Oh, they did discontinue the price actually. So the initial price was three hundred and fifty dollars. So I guess they decreased it by fifty. I was wrong. Um, wow. But fifty dollars is is barely, in my opinion, what they should have done. Because I, I do you know about the HomePod Mini? Yes. That sure. one sells for two hundred. I think one hundred. This would be reasonable if they sold this thing for two hundred. I think it would sell way better if it was. Like, yeah, because Alexas aren't that expensive. Like, they're pretty cheap. Like, the like, Echo is only, like, 50 or 80 bucks, is it not? I don't... Well, it depends which model you get. If you get the bigger speakers, then they're more expensive. But still, like... And I think $200 isn't, like, a thing where it interferes with the premium image of Apple. But it's still... True. Like, it's still expensive, of course. Like, not many people can justify $200 speaker. But $300 is kind of ridiculous. Yeah, like I guess it, I guess they're selling it more as a speaker than like a well than a smart home. Well, right? if you're looking at Alexa's advertisement, it's a smart home, but it looks like to me here they're selling it more as a speaker. Well, rather than if you look at the rather than like a Alexa device. Yeah, well, yeah, that's the thing is that like we're looking at the website. The top of it is all about the audio quality. You scroll down here and you see built-in intelligence that speaks for itself. <laughs> that's a smart term. Anyway. Um, <laughs> But anyway, the thing is, like this, of course, this thing has a new chip, but someone on Twitter was comparing it and said it was lighter and it had less subwoofers and tweeters. And so, like, half a pound lighter. Oh. So, I don't know if it'll affect the audio quality or not, but apparently, also, you can't do stereo speaker with a, the old first gen. But the thing is, is, I was watching a YouTuber, he was reacting to the news, and he said one of the big things is was temperature and humidity sensors now in it. And mm. it also has further smart home compatibility with matter compatibility. And the crazy thing is on top of that, it has a thing called sound recognition where it securely listens for smoke and carbon monoxide al alarms. And if you get one of them identified, it'll give a notification to your iPhone or iPad or Apple watch. Interesting. You know, it comes to my mind. I don't know what you think about this, but for me, it's like, I think it would have been smart for Apple to simply just make a portable speaker that was mm. premium. You know? Yeah. Like, it should have got more... Re I know they don't have the best speaker technology. I mean, they're uh, they're partnered with Beats, right? They own Beats. I yeah, think. they they partnered they uh, them in 2014. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, it would have been smarter for them to just, like, put out a speaker under Apple instead of Beats because I... I just don't see this thing selling well. There's not a difference between the last one. Yeah. There's not really good marketing. The only reason you would get this thing is if you're an Apple fanboy and you just want to be fully engrossed in like the Apple ecosystem. Yeah, you're a YouTuber or something. This, yeah, this thing is like almost useless. Yeah. Like, and so you could kind of see, see Alexa, like, mini like mini who compared really to buy Apple. Alexa anymore. Mm. right like well, it's not even that big of a thing anymore that it used to i remember when alexa and all those things used to be like super big and now it's just not really a thing anymore because it's only more, like oh i got an extra few hundred i might as well get one or if it's on sale right it was i don't big... go out of my way to go buy a home smart speaker mm -hmm. and so it's so it kind of compares the mini to the home pod and so this thing costs three times as much. So you could buy either three HomePod minis or one big HomePod. But it explains kind of the spec sheets. And so it has a different... Oh, it has the spatial audio. And the room sensing Ooh. capabilities, which was showing at the top. And a more... Because it's bigger, of course. When you The thing about speakers is it's purely a physics thing where it's basically based on how much air you can move. And so the bigger space you have, the more air you can move. But thing that was cool is that it could kind of like it's I th i'm sure you probably saw this up here but it has this room sensing feature where it could feel where it is on the room by echoes and stuff like that and optimize that huh. sound better so but the thing is is that the last generation of air home pod have that so like i don't think i've seen the crazy thing is i've only seen one home pod in person and that was all the way back in 2018 when Ooh. when people were talking about fortnite getting on mobile Oh so my goodness! Yeah, that, that, that was, was years ago. Yeah, that was years ago. So anyway, um, yeah. So basically, to conclude it, new generation HomePod, 
mid upgrade basically no difference honestly i would just call it mid in general like well no diff there's there's no difference besides a little bit of newer technology it's like going from like the 13 pro to the iphone 14 yeah no right. different right or you're barely any with, you're dealing with an item that feels like they just put it out there to just have another product under their brand like who's gonna buy this thing dude the thing about it is that like i feel like they could have tried to pack so many more features in it if because they've introduced the first generation five years ago and they have five years i feel like they could have done so many things to convince me like oh i should buy this because that's this feature this feature this feature this feature but no yeah. it's the same thing like the exact same like, features i've seen i've never been uh into like these smart home devices they've mm. never appealed to me and this just makes it appeal to me less like to me it just seems like a waste of money yeah no point whatsoever right it's just I I just I just wouldn't use this thing. I never see myself using this thing. Yeah. I see me like I would use it for maybe like a few few days, a week after getting it. Eventually, I'd probably forget about it and become dust in a corner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Um. So anyway, um. Also, it has a big two two fun facts. This thing does have a slightly bigger screen, like you see the screen here at the top of it yeah. compared to the first gen, which makes no difference. And also, it's powered. What's the point? It's on top. Yeah. If you put this thing up on a shelf, yeah, that well, that means nothing. Yeah, like. no. but also <laughs> the thing about it is the old one was powered by the A8 processor. This one's powered by the new S7 chip, which is in the Apple Watch. So, oh, okay. So anyway, cool. next, next, next um, announcement. So Apple just announced the second generation. 14 and or technically third generation 16 inch macbook pro second generation 14 inch macbook pro damn i need a new laptop but anyway <laughs> um the nice thing is they didn't increase their prices at least for the united states and they have a new m2 pro and m2 max chip with the problem is it's still five nanometers but you know you get more ram you get more cpu and gpu cores so yeah that's, yeah, yeah. So uh, wait are the m2 mac airs already out M2 MacBook Air? Yeah, or am I yeah. mistaken about that one? No, yeah, they are. Um, let's just browse yeah, those, back. Those released in the fall, right? No, so the M2 MacBook Air, which Melody has, yeah. this one released WWDC. So it was complete, okay. complete okay. redesign. Um, the worst MacBook to ever grace planet Earth, the M2 MacBook Pro, is... Yeah, but yeah. I thought we were just looking at two macbook m2 macbook pros m2 pro mac yeah so anyway those products released so yeah just oh there's an m2 max and m2 pro pros oh yeah, i get it i know i hate apple for doing this it's so stupid they just continue discontinue oh. the 13 inch discontinue right. it apple oh my gosh any like 40 year old mom is gonna get confused this is what is and this? the the dumb thing right. is <laughs> The the M2 MacBook Pro literally costs a hundred more dollars than the M2 MacBook Air, and the Mac M2 MacBook Air is completely redesigned. M2 MacBook Pro is gross. Half a Get decade design. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah, I yeah, is, I've ranted yeah, about this a couple yeah. times, but anyway, the crazy yeah, thing is many many times. So anyway, um, I watch this YouTuber and I'll see his um comparisons. But anyway, so the new one has. The old one had a 10 core CPU. This one now has a 12 core CPU. Both of them have 12 core CPU. And then you could get a 19 core GPU in the M2 Pro with 32 gigs of unified memory, which isn't bad. It's kind of like the old generation, except more powerful graphics and CPU. But the M2 Max, yeah. you could get 12 core CPU and up to a 38 core GPU. That is insane. Woo. And 96 gigabytes of memory in a laptop, bro in a laptop like oh my goodness you pray age of technology at, like you if you get that that's it's just stupid like you don't need like nobody needs that like five percent need the m2 max like most people even professionals like only professionals yeah. need these laptops like normal consumers don't even need the m2 pro but 
Anyway. Only Marcus Brownlee needs the Max. Like, no, he needs we'll the Max for Max Studio. <laughs> um, but this is the more interesting, interesting one that I wanted to talk about more. Actually, was the Mac Mini because they announced another second generation Apple Silicon Mac Mini. Interesting. So they so, did do a Mac Mini and another one so, in the end. So so okay. so, bro, I'm so excited about this. I'm I'm passionate about it. So the Mac Mini, in my opinion, is the best value Mac there's ever it's ever been in history. So tell me what it's the best value Mac right now. <laughs> Mac Mini. So anyway, the Mac Mini, more muscle, more hustle. I like that. Honestly, Apple, good job. Ooh, ooh slogan. Let's go. Anyway, so Mac Mini, the M1 <laughs> version released in 2020 alongside the M1 MacBook Air and MacBook Pro. And this thing okay. um, came with the M1. It was $700 for the base model, right? And so it was pretty solid, good performance, good thermals, good everything, just an all-around good computer. And then yeah. Apple today not only puts an M2 chip in it, but decreases the base model to $600. Oh. So even though it's like a... Wait, what? Yeah. Sorry, that only registered in my brain now. How much is this computer? It's five ninety nine, US now. For a Mac Mini. Yeah. M two chip. Yeah. So if we go to order now, um, you could get the M two with the eight core CPU, ten core GPU, eight gigs of RAM, and two fifty six gigs of storage, for six hundred dollars US. Wow. So. Hundred dollars cheaper than the last generation and a new chip. Although it is a ten year old. Well, I mean, I mean, it, it's seven hundred by the time you buy like your keyboard and mouse, you know. But and like, wow. And display, but the thing about oh, it. Displays in there to uh, to get a proper display with this thing, you well, know, add an extra five six hundred on top. Well, I mean, so, you could. Yeah. <laughs> you could use your Xbox display, honestly. It, that would work. But anyway. Probably. Because I still, it's like if you want to get, you know, you're grabbing this thing brand new. You don't have a display, so it's still at that point. You might as well grab the laptop. But that's dude, that's crazy. That's the thing is that so M2 chip, right? New base price. That's pretty sick. But what's even got me more excited is the fact that not only did they put the M2 chip in, they gave you an option for an M2 Pro chip, which is what I've been asking Apple for so long to do. They Why did they put the M2 Max in there? Because so here let me let's go to a little bit of a comparison shall we? Um, so we got okay. the new MacBook. Um, I we got the new Mac Mini, and then we got the Mac Studio. So I think this is a really nice comparison. So now that so before it was just M1, and then all so this is desktop right, not laptop. We're not talking laptop world. If you wanted to yeah, get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you wanted to get a powerful desktop, you had to buy the Mac Studio with an M1 Max or M1 Ultra or just the M1 Mac Mini. Now, 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 since since yesterday, now we can have an M2 or an M2 Pro. So you can finally get a Pro Series processor in a desktop. So therefore, it's cheaper and more reasonable for people to access because not everyone needs an M M1 Max chip. I'm surprised they created uh, a Mac so cheap. I know, but the thing is, the M2 Pro starts at thirteen hundred dollars compared to five six hundred, which makes sense, right? You get a more powerful yeah. processor, but anyway, it's like it'd be perfect for me because I no one I don't if I were to become a professional content creator, I would not need that one Max. Like I would be fine yeah. with the M2 Pro. Yeah, and so. Um, it kind of create fills that gap in the in the desktop area, I guess you could say. That's really nice, but like, again, besides content creators, who's who's buying these these desktops, right? Like, well, when you're a content creator, when you're a content creator. The laptop's the better one because once again, laptops on the go. But what about the home studio? Okay, say you don't have a home studio. Say you're more of like a film. Yeah maker you're going to different locations you're traveling yeah a laptop laptop will always be more convenient yeah than, no it will than a, than a desktop right but, but like finally, still like this is insane and the thing is is that it finally it's such a like you know how small the mac mini is right like this much power in such a small envelope makes it so convenient too 
and so yeah it, it's, it's really nice i mean i mean it is pretty small like you could definitely pack the mac mini in the bag mm -hmm. but you gotta find display right <laughs> yeah i know i know so but i'm finally happy that gap's finally been closed and mm -hmm. and so yeah and the thing about it is that do you want to spend you could save 700 bucks by just getting a home studio set up and getting an m2 pro mac mini instead of an m2 pro macbook pro yeah so you know there's cost savings there i guess in a way if you already have a display keyboard and everything else yeah if you have everything already it is definitely definitely cheaper mm -hmm. And yeah. I would rather get this than uh oh man, what's the other one? The well, the built the built in one. The yeah. iMac. The iMac twenty four inch. Definitely rather yeah. get this than the iMac. Yeah. Well anyway, so yeah. for me, Mac Mini, finally happy, ten out of ten. This is gonna kill the low end not gaming PC, but just PC workstation market. So what some people say. Apple's kinda of already done that. You know why it comes I bet. to but they're killing when it comes to work. Yeah. When it comes to work, Apple's kind of killed everybody in that that uh yeah. that area of Give life. me six hundred dollars. You know, the only thing they don't have is gaming, and that's what people complain about. Yeah. Once once Mac and gets mining, gaming guess, but... if once Apple gets gaming, it's it's game over for Windows and Google, basically. <laughs> so if anyway. it ever does. I don't think they need to. Give give me six hundred dollars. I'm buying a Mac Mini right now. That's all I need. <laughs> I need a Mac Mini. Ten out of ten. Moi bien. Good computer upgrade. Moi bien. Moi bien. Moi bien. So anyway, so now we got the Apple glasses, which I don't know if you've heard me talk about or not. I have never heard about this. What the frick, Apple glasses? <laughs> Dude, I've been hearing rumors about this for what? about a, a year or two now. Buddy, I don't even keep up with half this stuff anymore. So, anyway, basically, the rumor is is that Apple this oh, year... Oh, the augmented reality ones. Yeah. Okay. So, basically, quarter one of this year, basically, Apple's going to introduce an AR VR headset that will um, compete with Oculus and all these other companies to um, create their own headset. But the problem is, is that currently the rumor is is that It'll cost three thousand dollars, or two thousand. And wow. so, but Apple's going to create its own software for it, and interchangeable headbands. And so, what Apple's probably going to do is they're going to announce it and then ship it six months later and give developers. I heard. I saw. I saw a video, short video, like a TikTok, about somebody using AR glasses already. To watch multiple screens at times, so no matter where that, they like, they could do like multiple displays right in front of their eyes. Yeah, that was the MetaQuest so Pro. They could watch a movie and work at the same time, huh? That's the MetaQuest Pro. Oh, okay. That's yeah. what those ones are. Yeah. So, and so that's the thing is that the MetaQuest Pro I think costs like fifteen hundred dollars. Like I think that's one of the most okay. expensive headsets I could list off the top of my head. But um. That's the thing is like I don't know if there'd be much competition at this price point, but I think it's Apple just dipping its toes into this sector, because Apple hasn't released. A I new think I think it's the start of the like this is the start of these glasses, right? Like think back to like every kind of new product that's now famous, right? There's like one company that starts it out. They're gonna put it out, yeah, and it's not gonna sell well. But it's just to get it out there, right? Ten years down the line, five years down the line, where will these glasses be? Mm. Yeah, no, I agree. Right? Like, what's the evolution over time, right? So they're going to come out with a big thing be like, yeah, these are two grand, try them out. They aren't going to be that good. They're only going to be for tech junkies, basically. And yeah. then it starts getting integrated. And then it becomes cheaper. And then the technology gets better. Right, mm -hmm. but you have to get that first. You know, you gotta gotta kick down the door. You gotta get your step, you, your foot in the door, really step into it, and and get get the ball rolling. You know. Yeah, exactly. So I see these things. Right, if if it comes out and like you got guys all over YouTube, all over the internet, being like, "Yo, check out these glasses," right, or have them if if you can afford them. Uh, that type of thing, right? Oh, it's so much fun. It's a cool experience in the experience. That's all it is. 
but where will it go from there? Then it's going to do well. But if they don't deliver on that cool experience right away, on the wow factor, then I don't think yeah. it's going to do well. And that's the thing is all. that what I've heard in the past is Apple ultimately plans to replace the iPhone with these. Like, of course, they're going to introduce them alongside the iPhone and like do the iPhone alongside of it for a while, but eventually just discontinue the iPhone and just do these, which is a wild I've vision. I've thought about that. I would hate not using my hands. I'm going to be honest. Like, I've thought, like, it's the reason I like the controller in VR. I mm. don't like using VR when I don't, when I'm not doing anything. Right? So, like, I like the, I, I like holding my phone. I like feeling the vibrate. I like feeling mm. the haptic feedback. I like using my thumbs, the actual action of it. Uh, it's really satisfying. Like, I would hate to just yeah. sit here with goggles on my face uh, doing stuff. I know some people really watch movies like that, but I can't do it for the life of me. Yeah, and that's the thing is that it the, none of the rumors say, but I just thought now, what if Apple launches controllers alongside of it, right? And so... That could be interesting. Or a way to interact with it, because, like, for example, the original Apple Watch... Um, it had to be connected to the iPhone basically at all times to do any functionality. Now, the Apple Watch can be completely separate. And so I'm thinking this could possibly oh. be the same thing where you have to be connected via Bluetooth every time you use this headset to get cell service, to get data, just uh, assisting with the processing and stuff like that. And so... Yeah. That's and, a good point because I was thinking like it came to mind like, oh, Sam on 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 a flight or whatever or i'm simply actually just chilling on ho at home don't got tv don't got display but i got these glasses right i'm out about i you know um i bluetooth basically from my phone to my glasses and then the movie i'm playing on my phone plays on my glasses mm -hmm. continuity <clears throat> plays on my glasses right yeah can do that type of thing that would be really sick yeah uh be able to do that right to decide between your phone and glasses mm -hmm. and use your glasses as like an extra accessory um yeah. for fun again for fun yeah. like i don't see any practicality in these that's useful like a phone i don't see any way they like market if, if they market it like this is gonna change your life and make life easier like the watch people are gonna laugh at it because it won't you're yeah. blinding yourself well, uh, actually, that's the thing is that right. it's going to have augmented reality. Sorry to interrupt you, but like a good example yeah. would be like with Google. If you're showing your phone camera at a certain thing, it shows giant arrows where to go. If you're navigating a city or like, yeah. like the Google Glass where it's like a layer on top of the real world. So it'll have cameras and apparently they figured out a way to like, you know, like normal VR headsets. You see cameras everywhere. It's like a bulging yeah. sore thumb. On this version, it's going to be more like, um, it's going to be more hidden and concealed in the, uh, like, like the black part of the glass right here. Like you could probably see that you could hide many cameras in there. Yeah. And so. How long, uh, okay. So let's, let's say hypothetically you get people starting to walk around the streets with augmented reality, mm. right? They're walking around. Uh, and then, of course, you're going to have people right away laughing at them because they're dorks. Yeah. Uh, and, it, and it's just a waste of money. It's a waste of time. You don't Looks know what like a sci-fi movie. You youngsters, you know, you're wasting your life away. Say that does become a reality. How long do you think it would take before it becomes acceptable? Right? How before, just like, just like the phone. Oh, I don't need a phone. Oh, I don't need social media. Now everyone has a phone. Now everybody has social media. How long is how long is it going to be? Uh, how long will it take for it to be? Everyone has a pair of these glasses. Yeah. Well, I was just going to ask, right. like, how long did it take the iPhone? Five, ten years, and then it was pretty dominant. Like, I'd say by 2017, almost everyone had an iPhone. In the modern almost, world. but I'll be honest. Like most of the older generation that I've seen. Haven't all gotten phones uh, till like 20, 2019, 2020, even later, right? Like, it's mm -hmm. actually, as it been till recently that now everyone has a phone and an yeah. updated phone. Well, even my right? grandparents. No longer the iPhone 4, everyone has a phone. 
Well, yeah, even my reliable grand ones. and gramps don't have a smartphone, and they probably won't need to get it. Because, like, at this point in life, why would you get it? Why do you need it? Like, it's not that useful to them because they just need to True. call people, and right? And so, like, I totally understand that. I'm not judgmental of them at all. They're not missing out on much, not getting a smartphone. Yeah. And so, and it probably will be the same because that's the thing is that older people generally are less tendent to adopt newer technology because it is more foreign to them than younger people and yeah. so i could see the same thing because like google i don't you probably saw the google glasses like it's showing in the image right here launched about 10 yeah, years yeah, ago yeah. but they were way too ahead of their time and there's so many skepticisms and like it's impairing people's driving and it's like no it's just augmented reality but people had so many misunderstandings and so i kind of can see it going a bit the same here but coming from apple people are much more likely to accept it as a, a good thing than coming from other companies like it's just yeah like when you think of apple like you just it works like it just it's gonna you know it's gonna be good it's reliable they've Apple's built that re trusted right yeah they've built so. that reputation and so like oh this is apple like oh so then yeah. that means it will and that's the thing it's like how uh, the metaverse is crashing because it's facebook right yeah. nobody trusts facebook but people trust apple yeah, and so you can see these um, this cloth here. And so one of the things that I have to overcome is also thermals and comfort. And so you see this cloth right here. That's going to try to make it most comfortable. It looks really dorky, going to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll see when it actually comes out because I don't think it'll look like this because this is like a year-old drawing. Like, I yeah. saw that. And so it'll probably will look different, but also just... Apple, you know, they want to be premium, so they might include glass and a metal, but you don't want to make it too heavy because heavy VR headsets can get tiring over time. And Oh, yeah, absolutely. No, it'd be nice to actually just, like, one day have the glasses I have now, except they could project augmented reality when they want. Tony Stark, right? Like, that'd be nice. Tony Stark. Like, yeah. it, like, I dream of a world where everyone can be Tony Stark. You know, yeah. like, yeah, I want to see through phone as well. Apple, where's that? Yeah, right? and that's the thing I is that my, a couple I of the my clear thin phone. I, two <laughs> of the rumors actually that I want to bring up too was one battery life because apparently um, they're designing a thing where you could wear like a belt, almost like a MagSafe belt that plugs into your headphones to extend battery life for long periods of time. Because we know how efficient Apple's processors are on their iPhones and Macs. But the second thing yeah. is, too, is that they're going to build their own separate app store with AR VR apps that have already been developed on iPhones, but specifically designed for this headset. Mm. But another rumor is, is that because it's running on Apple Silicon, that it will, um, that will be allowed at the beginning to run iPhone apps, actually. Yeah. So, Jonathan, like, that I just realized something. What? <laughs> Todd Howard when these things are released. <laughs> Skyrim yeah. now in real life, guys. <laughs> yeah. You can now literally be in the world of Skyrim, not VR. No, it is the world around you, okay? Yeah. Like, <laughs> everybody's going to be walking around either play Minecraft or Skyrim. It's going to be released about a thousand times on each new generation of these glasses. Just watch mm. it happen. Watch it. Yeah. <laughs> and so <laughs> exactly. everything is, um, and so, um, the thing about it is that it's apparently supposed to have eye scanning, like the MetaQuest pro and it, what, what else was the other room? Caleb. Shh. Um, <laughs> Shush. Camera. and then processors. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's basically it for the Apple headset. And so we'll see how it folds out when it's actually announced. Like, I'll probably tell I now you. just see Skyrim in real life. That's all I see now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's all I see. I exactly. see opportunities for Todd Howard to make more money. Right here. Also, for sure. also the thing about it is that on top of this, uh, even a few years before I started listening about the headset, there was also, like, I remember back in 2019 watching everything Apple Pro and, like, a $500 Apple glasses with LiDAR and camera and stuff like that. But we'll see if that comes down the road later rather than yeah. this year. Because, you know. Yeah, because I don't know about you. I'm not paying two grand for glasses. 
No, yeah. Five hundred dollars is much more reasonable price. Yeah, even then, I make them two, and I'll be happy. <laughs> yeah, right. But anyway, yeah. so that's Apple. Gla- and also, here's another news story. Apparently, they're working on a cheaper version of the AR VR headset, priced similarly to iPhone. So interesting. More like a thousand dollars to fifteen hundred. So we'll see how that turns out. When is out. this thing going to be announced? Do you know? Uh, like March, April. So pretty soon. Oh, holy! Wow. Okay. So, first quarter means the first three months of the year, or the second quarter means the second three months of the year. Um, and so, yeah, we're gonna see it pretty soon. And I feel like they're gonna start out with the expensive one, then go down. Like start with a three thousand, get a good foothold, premium, and then get a bit cheaper, right? Yeah. Yeah, that makes so, sense. Anyway. That's it for AR VR headset. Oh. We'll see when it comes out, but this is just speculation based on rumors. But I think that's the thing I'm most excited for. <laughs> just yeah. to see. Just to see. I'm just curious. Also, um, that's the thing. I want to quickly cover on yeah, this. Yeah, I've actually. known about this. I've known yeah. about this. Yeah. Mac Pro is the last one with the Intel chip. You could still go and on you Apple. You were saying how, how, like, why have they done that? Like, it's I know. been so long. But that's the thing too is that like literally I could go on Apple's website and buy an Intel Mac Pro and they said it would take two years and it's been past two years by a couple months now. And so one of the things I was actually going to cover was – so if you go to the Mac Studio right now, the Mac Studio is actually supposed to be a stopgap product like the iMac Pro. So um, th- you know the trash can Mac Pro? Yeah, absolutely. So this – so then – Trash can Mac Pro came out in 2013. People didn't like it. So then people wanted a still powerful computer, but Apple wasn't ready to release the cheese grater Mac Pro, right? And so yeah. um, in between, they had the iMac Pro. And so in 2017, ah. two years before the Mac Pro came out. And so what people are speculating is that Mac Studio is basically the iMac Pro of nowadays where it's a stopgap in between um, the Apple Silicon and intel mac pro that would that'd be a pretty good assumption like because, like that's the thing too, like that would make sense that apple would want to because they know, have just the, give you something for now but like i mean do we need another pro like this thing's great yeah right that's a debate but anyway they have the m1 ultra which is currently the most powerful apple silicon chip the problem is is that apparently apple's had a lot of issues with the de- because like they even compare if you go to if you go to the website you can see they compare the performance with the Mac Pro the 16 core Intel Xeon and they see uh-huh. and they see how much more powerful it is and they said it was like 70% faster on stage right like in CPU and GPU but the thing yeah, about that is what they said I was there and so the thing about the Mac Studio is with the M1 Ultra actually. So you see here, you could have it's insane. You could literally have up to let's scroll down back here. Um, you could literally have up to 68, 64 core GPU and 20 core CPU. Ooh. And so basically, what the M1 Ultra is is two M1 Maxes dies fused together. I know that's that's just, just how they do it. Yeah, they just which, go like ah. M1, is, let's create the M1 Pro. That's two M1s. M1 Max, two M1 Pros. <laughs> you know? Well, it's not two M1, M1 Ultra, Pros. Two M1 Maxes. The M1 Max is a different chip than the M1 Pro. It just has more GPU cores and encoders. So, but. Oh, uh, okay. Well, I if, you, if you work at. <laughs> if you're the guys that work at. How they do it basically at the. I don't know if I could get a visual on this, but. They basically take an M1 Max and to make an M1 Pro, they basically make a part that you could cut off if there's any defective GPU yeah. cores. And so basically, but then M1 Max has a die-to-die internet connect, 2.5 terabytes a second, revolutionary. It's insane. Like, but anyway, the problem with having so many GPU cores, and not only that, was these chips were scaled from iPhone chips, which is insane, right? Like... They were what? So Apple Silicon on Mac is basically a scaled version of an iPhone chip. So they took the ARM architecture from oh. iPhone and then made it bigger and bigger and bigger. 
and the thing about making it yeah. bigger is there's unforeseen problems. And so yeah. the thing about the M1 Ultra is it's powerful, right? It's insane. It's stupid powerful. No one needs the M1 Ultra. Like, even the M1 Max is overkill. But the thing about it is that with an iPhone, you didn't really foresee this problem. But it's also a two-sided problem. But anyway, basically what they found out is there's this cache called TLMB, which is basically cache for the graphics, right? And what they found out is in the M1 Ultra, it was 32 megabytes, which is fine in an iPhone. But in a, gr but in a Mac that's ca dealing with like thousands of gigabytes of large files and insane processing yeah things. they find out that that <laughs> fills up pretty quickly and so just a little bit right <laughs> just a little bit and so there's this you could optimize for that but 90 percent of apps aren't optimized for that and so what they these youtubers found out is that they get disproportionate um gains basically where just because the gpu count is higher doesn't mean that it's faster like it's faster but like the amount mm. of faster is less and less as the more GPU cores get on. And so that's wild. Even though it has insane bandwidth gigabyte in the RAM and the memory bandwidth, it still doesn't fully take advantage. So two things Apple could use to solve this is either increase the TLMB, which I think they should do in the higher end chips, or they make it easier to optimize for that but you kind of have to rewrite your whole app from the ground up, right, to do that. And most developers aren't willing yep. to do that. So I think they should just increase it. But it's mm. such a minor tech nerd issue that, like, nobody's going to know or care about this that buy this. But yet again, yeah. it's the techies that buy this. And this thing's – and that's the thing is, like, they – these YouTubers complain about these kind of issues. But, like, no one's going to notice. And second of all, like, it's already <laughs> insanely fast. Like, you're not – like – insane like 8k you're not missing out on much okay so like just calm down <laughs> it's like you're just causing controversy i understand you gotta bring attention to the issue but making 10 videos on the same thing is not helping <laughs> and now you're just trying to get clickbait man <laughs> like and so it's like like i understand it's an issue but like you're still just missing the fact that it's still insane right yeah, you're just it's, missing kind of the whole point. So, you're complaining about a little thing, right? Anyway, enough about the Mac Studio. What I was going to say was that what Apple's basically going to do, was going to do with the Mac Pro, is they were going to do an M1 Ultra version, and then for the Mac Pro, they are going to do an M1 Extreme, which I'm sure you can guess what Extreme. that means. So two M1 Ultras, and you put that together, and then you get the M1 Extreme, right? But you still can't play Fortnite on it. Yeah. Well, you can. It's just not as good. Not as good. You're you're limited to sixty frames because you could your computer can handle like the Fortnite at three hundred FPS, but your display is limited by sixty because your um, studio display is stuck at sixty hertz. Yeah. But anyway, um, they've apparently Apple's had issues with Mac Mac Pro development. And developing that chip. Interesting. And so that's why they've de delayed it. And so hopefully, let's look up actually um, Mac Pro Apple Silicon. Because if we go to news, they, you know, anyway, um, we're hoping that they come out. I've heard rumors that maybe it'll come out later this year, but we'll see if Apple solves that problem. Yeah. So, anyway. Do you want to talk about the iPhone 15 so early in the year? Is there already leaks? It's dude, January. Dude, dude, I swear, I see this every single year. Like a week after the iPhone releases, people already talk about the next iPhone. It is so annoying. Dude. It's. Uh, I just hate the name 15. It makes everyone feel old. Like. <laughs> Yeah, right. <laughs> can like can they do a different name? Change well, it up a little bit. How about you go work for Apple and then you can tell them what to name it? What I'll would you name it? CEO, watch me, dude. Just 
just hostile takeover. You just buy all the stock, <laughs> and, and then you're like, make me CEO, I or I'll destroy, <laughs> I'll destroy your company. <laughs> um, I'll but, fire everyone at Apple except the one person. Craig Federici, don't fire him, please, if you're going to take over. He's... He's my favorite. I'm gonna resurrect Steve Jobs. <laughs> yeah. I have the power of God. So, <laughs> last last story news of the day. So, we don't have much about the iPhone 15 right now, but there's a couple things. Okay, so can I just list them all oh. off and then hear your reactions? Oh, okay. Let's so, go. <laughs> so, so get ready. So first we got the naming, cameras of course, and then pricing. So yeah. there's a couple other things rumored, but I kind of forget them right now, and I don't care because it's so early into the year. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> but so get this naming. So right. first we got iPhone 15, iPhone 15 Plus, iPhone 15 Pro, and iPhone 15 Ultra. Mm, it's gonna be Pro Max, but okay. Yeah, it's been named Pro Max, but the rumor is it's gonna be named Ultra. Which is ultra confusing, in my opinion. I agree. I think they should just keep with Pro Max. I agree with you. But what the thing is is that the Ultra is according apparently supposed to have more features than the Pro, which is like it's the most expensive phone. It makes sense, but just bring it back to three iPhones so it could be more simple. Like Apple, yeah. please just do fifteen, fifteen Pro, fifteen Ultra. That'll make sense. I'll I'll I support. I hate the Plus. Like, I get the big phone idea. Like, some people just want a big freaking phone with a massive battery. But, like... Uh, yeah. Just a waste of money. I know. And so, yeah. And so, that's the thing, too, is pricing. Because apparently the iPhone 14 Plus has not sold well. And so, mm. um, they're going to apparently inc decrease the prices, actually. So, the... Wait, what is it? So the iPhone 15 is to start at... Oh, wait. No, no, no. So actually, no. The 15 and the 15 Plus are going to stay the same prices as the current year. The thing is, they're going to increase the prices of the 15 Pro and the 15 Ultra. Why? They're expensive enough. They already no, cost no. an arm and leg. <laughs> what well, is this? Two things, probably. Increase price costs... And inflation and also just profit margins right yeah. and also if it already costs an arm and a leg and Apple fanboys are willing to pay that much for an iPhone you might as well increase it and drive more people towards you the lower end you might as well sell your liver right yeah no no like it's already expensive so why not make it more expensive and drive more people because yep. like you can see here I think it solves a problem because then the iPhone there's a $200 price difference between the 15 pro and the 15 plus compared to a $100 difference which helps differentiate things a lot more and so I think it's also yeah because like the insane thing is, is that the iPhone 14 pro with the a16 apparently the a16 chip cost twice as much as the a15 chip from previous years oh wow so insane and so you could kind of like with the world right now and consumer demand and rising costs everywhere. Apple hasn't raised the prices since the iPhone 10. And so it kind of makes sense now why they're doing it, right? Wow. Yeah, I guess so. Now would be the time. And so, and it makes sense, right? So, and the yeah. last rumor is that the iPhone, so you know how Samsung has the 10X zoom? Yeah. Apparently the iPhone 15 Ultra or Pro Max whichever one it ends up being, is going to get that. Hmm. But the thing I is... I think that's just fanboys dreaming. <laughs> well, that's the rumors anyway. I don't know if Marcus Germantes has, has it, said it or someone else has said it, but that's the yeah. rumor. Jeff Poo. Yeah, he's a fairly accurate guy. Because um, the thing about it is that Sam... I think one difference, though, will be how much digital zoom Apple will allow because... I've I've thought about this before. Samsung, if you have a three times telephoto zoom, it allows you to zoom in thirty times. Apple, if you have a three times telephoto, you're only allowed to zoom in fifteen times. So, Apple only allows you to do digitally zoom in a multiple of five, 
Well, Samsung only allows you to zoom in a multiple of 10. So even if we get a 10x yeah. per periscope zoom, you'll only be allowed to digitally zoom in 30 times, which is still a good amount mm -hmm. of zoom. But Apple could That's break... That's quite a bit of zoom. But, yeah. but like, it still is doing that much. Yeah, no, it's still quite a bit of zoom. I never use it on my phone because it's way too blurry at, on a 3X. Yep. But it'll be much more clear in an Apple phone. I, but I think Apple could break that precedent because, you know, to get that number 100 times zoom on marketing, even though it might not work good, is really like, whoa, we're that probably would, up to... That would sell well. And if it's better... Mm-hmm. But I mean, dude, I can already hear the Sammy fanboy saying, "Oh, we've had that for four years now. I'm going to cut up." It's like, shut <laughs> up, shut up. I don't care at all what you have like, to say. <laughs> like you're just you're annoying. Don't care though. Oh, yeah, we've already had that for ten years. Shut up, man. Shut up. It's like, <laughs> man. We've already had blah, 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 and then their audio cuts out for like five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> like, I understand it's been there for four years, but get your Android butt out of here. I don't care. Yeah. You're not helping as anything. Say, as we both use Android phones. Oh, dude. And that's and the thing. <laughs> I can already see Samsung mocking Apple for this. Like, yeah. Like, they mock Apple for the megapixel count. They mock them for having charger in the box when they literally, re like, remove the charger from their boxes, like, three months later. Like, Samsung ads are just, um, they're another level of weird. It, it's like, it's like, uh, Pepsi always targeting Coke, but Coke doesn't give, a, like, a crap about Pepsi. Like... Yeah. It's like Coke is like, yeah, whatever, we're still selling worldwide and Pepsi's like only advertisement is that they're trying to be better than Coke. Yeah, right. And so Yeah. And that's the thing, is that I feel like with the rise of Google Pixel, it won't be just the Sammy fanboys anymore. Cause you Yeah, know, Pixel especially if all of a sudden the Pixel eight does well this year, dude. it's gonna be crazy. Well, the Pixel Seven sorry. They're on a roll, honestly. Yeah. Like, I'm rooting for Google to sell just as good or better than Samsung. That's what I want them honestly, to do. Honestly, I see sixes a lot, but I see sevens even more. Yeah, all no, the dude. Time. I worked at and the And I can recognize it. That is what's crazy, Jonathan. Mm -hmm. I, it's like, I can't, I cannot not look at it. Somebody walks by, they're holding a Pixel phone. I've never had this before. Somebody walks by, they're holding a Pixel phone. My eye is automatically drawn to the phone. Yeah, right? I just can't. It's just automatic. Bam! It's bright, it's vibrant, it's there, it's different. Anybody walking by a better phone just blurs into the Dude, background, right? Like, but Pixel's so noticeable. Yeah, and their design team is so good. Like, it's makes so unique. Like, you know, that's a Google Pixel. It's not like, oh, that's some Android phone. Never, no, that's a Google Pixel. Like they, nope, that's a Pixel. That's Google. I am. That's Google doing Google stuff. Like in the past, I'm like, yeah, Google's got good stuff. But then I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm rooting for Google to win because I think they got something going on here that is yeah. close to Apple. Like the next phone I'm gonna buy is not gonna be a Samsung. It's either gonna be an iPhone or a Google Pixel, for me. Hundred percent. And yeah, so same here. Samsung has lost its appeal to me, like m for most things. Yeah, and so I mean, most companies have for me. It's mainly just like, okay, let's actually look at what's good now. The reason why I'm advocating as well because just more competition, but just Google, they're doing things so well now, right? Like they finally got their their game plan, I guess. Yeah, they better not screw it up, like one plus. Yeah. yeah. Well, the thing is, is that the Google vision of the Google Pixel is different than the One Plus, and I feel like it's harder to fail on the vision of the Pixel than it is on the OnePlus. Like, Agreed. Agreed. Like that intelligence yeah. and smartness of the Google Pixel kind of is Google's vision in general. And their and, camera as well is kind mm -hmm. of taking over. Right? Yeah. Like all of a sudden they're winning all these benchmarks put forth, right? Like, I mean, freaking Marcus Brown Lee gave the Pixel freaking camera of the year again and best value phone again yeah, right like you just look at this thing that's a google pixel there i want it's just i just want it <laughs> i know. know right oh, man 
anyway, so that's been it for all my news and stuff like that and reactions. Yeah, I guess we'll end there. Uh, Apple's cool, but we love Pixel. Anyways. Yep. Go, <laughs> go Google. Let's, let's go Google. Anyway, that was episode three of the Mashed Potatoes. Hope you guys have a wonderful 2023. First episode of 2023, I just realized. Hey! Hey, let's go. go. Oh. Anyway, hopefully we'll see you guys next week. Adios. Absolutely. Adios.